overall though, I was mostly worried about if Dante was going to play Sombra or not. Um, I think if Dante played Sombra, they probably would have had a better chance because I think that's probably his best character. One thing we really prepared for in particular was uh, just in case they ran like a bunch of odd stuff. Uh, it was it was like one of the weeks to where like it was kind of almost a set meta, like everyone was kind of running the th same thing. So we kind of expected some kind of a mirror of dive or something. So we just prepared for that mostly. For the most part, um, like I just needed to improve my Moira and, you know, get up to Kodak's level on Moira because Kodak has a really good Moira. So um, I don't know. It definitely is like a synergy thing because you also don't want to be, I guess, uh, swapping in players 24-7. Um, so it could, it, you need time to build the synergy, I suppose. But uh, we'll see what happens as we get ready to jump into game number one. And who can draw first blood on Oasis? Dead Eye is out. Pulse bomb into the back. Dante not able to find anything. And Baby Bay just to play safe. Will go ahead, drop down into the pit. 97%, now 98, 99 coming through. We're into double OT as Baby Bay gets a nice flank. And he is just fanning the hammer right into the back of Mooma's. <laughs> head. I was going to say something else, but Dogman with the goal essence will be able to take down Dante. Edison traded out, but they need so much more, and it's just not going to happen. Dogman claims yet another one with the goal essence. The Supercharger will be there to empower the rest of the Atlanta Reign. Is already building up towards his next at 42% as the rest of the team is cleaning up the members of the Houston Outlaws. FRD gets the self-destruct on the line, and Maza is still holding on to yet another sound barrier. But Blase picked off moments before he would have an EMP online. They get shoved off the point. It ticks down. That's going to be 147%. Atlanta Rain taking the first map of the series. They go between maps pretty quick, uh, so there's not like a lot of time to talk between maps, but there's still a lot of time at like halftime and stuff like that, so that makes up for the quicker pace, I suppose, because there's less technical issues online for the most part, I feel like. So it's just generally easier just to keep to just count out the maps, I guess. And remind you that we are in fact headed to Watchpoint Gibraltar. EMP is getting ready to come up for both of the Sombras. We'll see who pulls the trigger first as Gator has already been eliminated. EMP comes out from Baby Bay and manages to catch several members on the side of the Houston Outlaws as they continue to get swept up. Rock is now going to be under pressure, taken down in the back line with just point ninety-eight meters left to go. It seems like Atlanta Rain should have this one in hand. Luma with a Primal Rage will buy a little bit of extra time, even finds that kill onto Dogman, but now will be finished off as the ult expires, and it seems like it's just a matter of time before this rolls through and the time bank gets yep. bumped up. But with 15 seconds remaining, That's you so see the rough. Houston Outlaws, they're going for the Hail Mary. They're waiting for all six members to be back. Baby Bay has EMP. And then they will go in for the finish. He's got the EMP, there it is. Yep, EMP comes through. Jex is going to be caught. Raucous as well. Cannot use the Nana boost. self destruct from Echo. Unable to find anything. And Muma still going to be hacked. Can't get the Primal Rage online. We'll get finished off at 89%. OT bleeding away. No one can make their way over to the cart. Oh yeah, so like during halftime, um, I think the coaches, they were more focused on just like reminding us of all the stuff uh, that we could see, of what we could play. Um, some of the basic things that we maybe should have been doing better in the first two maps. Maybe one or two big things that they noticed that would help uh, a lot. Besides that, they just probably try not to flood our brains too much and make sure we get a break, so. So the staff have access to TeamSpeak, which is what we use for matches. Normally we use Discord, but um, for matches, there's there's like a Blizzard admin and then staff is also allowed in the team speak. And so in between Silence, Sefi, um, Dongman, of course, usually give their, their input, their feedback on what we're doing well and what we're doing um, poorly on. And so we get that feedback in between maps and then um, between maps two and three, there's halftime. So you get an extended break to you know review over stuff if you need to. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are now at match point here in this series between the Houston Outlaws and the Atlanta Reign. So this is where, yeah. you know, double shield, I think, is going to be a little bit more prevalent, especially on A. And I think that uh, Atlanta Reign, you know, they're the stronger team for that. Oh, it is not. Shots coming through. Federation under some fire. Let's fall low. FRD loses on the mech again. Two ticks going to be gained. EMP comes in. Manages to find a few, but Raucous has the perfectly timed transcendence coming in, but hydration still falling as Baby Bay finds that kill. They continue to tick up, and somebody has to contest the point right now, but they're going to be unable to do so. Right now, it's all about so Edison's nicely. Blizzard. He needs it to be big. And Blizzard comes through. Trance still going to be 30% off of Raucous. He will just go ahead and get finished. Baby Bay managing to find two kills. 
And that's fine. This is the fight that the Outlaw should have anticipated. They knew that a lot of ultimates were stacked up for the Atlanta Reign. Now they have those gone. Four seconds. Cart still rolling through. Dante manages to find one of the Sticky Bombs. Getting rid of FRD, but Dogman takes him down. Now Hydration. Rock is going to be gone. They got so close. The time bank was so good. But Houston Outlaws, they need to pull off a reverse sweep. Looks like they will not even be able to make it to the end of King's Row. The OT will bleed away. And Atlanta Reign, in the end, will be able to take this series. We weren't sure, since King's Row is kind of an interesting map, you can run a lot of different compositions on it. We weren't really sure what they intended to run. We figured some sort of spam. And so we, we started on, I believe, dive, and then we ended up on spam. Obviously, since everybody, everyone on our team is just better, we just took the spam mirror and eventually just won out that map. I think we try to, we try to like focus on adapting for sure after maps. Uh... For me, I noticed certain things about their DPS that were there to try to counter me. Like everyone kind of noticed like little things that they could kind of swap up, you know, after a certain team fight or after maps or something that would help uh, just counter their playstyle. You know, like playing those types of teams, you have to kind of keep a mentality of uh, staying, you know, dominant and kind of just destroying them. Um, so that's that's the kind of mindset that we try to get ourselves into every week. I think as far as like the two to three day preparation, I think that kind of time window feels about right because the first couple of days usually don't really net that much practice because everybody's kind of, you know, trying different comps and seeing what works. And then usually a really strong comp or two cements itself um, on like a Thursday or Friday. And usually you have matches on Saturday or Sunday. And so usually you get the best comps on Thursday or Friday and it, it's kind of frustrating. However, I think you do kind of see the best teams figuring out a system to practice with hero pools and, you know, find, find the best way to get the cogs and wheels working in their team and get everything running smoothly.